So before we get into the install, we're about to get into a demo of actually doing the install. But there's some important questions that you have to have the answers to before you do this. Uh, these are over and above your normal SQL Server installation questions. These are the ones that are specific to analysis services. First thing, excuse me, just get your SQL Server stuff out of the way, right? The same uh, minimum recommendations that apply to installing SQL Server will apply to a machine in which you are just going to install analysis services on. So go ahead, you know, that's the link that you see down there is the official Microsoft documentation for the minimum requirements. Okay, so feel free to open up the PDF that accompanies this video and you know go to that link there. Let's get into now analysis services. You're going to want to be 64-bit. Okay, uh, it it almost doesn't make sense here in 2010, 2011 to put a product like analysis services on a 32-bit machine today. Uh, you'll want to use NTFS as the file system. Uh, you want to be on a quad core, probably. Uh, I would guess that's what you're going to be working on here. What you've got to figure out are the components that we're going to be working with. Okay, let's, re let's just recall what's going on here. Okay? We've got relational databases. That was our data entry systems, right? We have our relational data warehouse. That was where we had the fact tables and the dimension tables and the star schema. Okay, so let's actually put our full name. So here's our uh, relational DBs, RDBs, okay, that are on, let's say, a SQL server, an Oracle server, whatever. Uh, here is our relational OLAP database, okay, our relational data warehouse. And then we have our SSAS database, and this is our multi-dimensional OLAP. So a multi-dimensional database OLAP. And then this other fourth one over here was our optional. You remember what that one was? That was our report server, right? So really, I guess it, I should have put down here that there are four components. The third one sorry the fourth one being optional you don't have to have report servers uh, or reporting services installed most people do but they don't have to right okay so the decision that we are really having to cover in this video is which machine will you install analysis services on okay. so you, this was the graphic we had right here was the uh, data entry systems the relational here's our relational OLAP and here's our multi-dimensional OLAP okay. so that's what we're covering here so to answer this question you've got to know the answer to a bunch of different things so I'm gonna walk you through a list of these five topics and we're gonna talk about the, dis the, the discussion points okay so number one let's talk licensing okay. here's what you need to know about licensing a SQL Server license is required for each server that has SQL Server installed. Okay. So if we have SQL Server installed on the blue here, so this is the data entry system and it's a SQL Server based system, and we have SQL Server here and this is on a new machine and it has our relational OLAP and then we have a dedicated analysis services SQL Server machine so a separate machine and then we have a dedicated SQL Server reporting services machine we would have to have four SQL Server licenses we have to license every single one of those machines and it can get expensive and it can get tricky to figure out all the licensing okay number one I'm just a trainer okay don't come to me for a un complete understanding of licensing you may have access to a really, really smart vendor rep that you can ask great questions to. Use their advice and use their knowledge if, uh, you know, don't just depend on this video for learning licensing, okay? But you would need one license for each, okay? So that would be four separate machines, four separate SQL Server licenses would be required, okay? Now, what if you can fit all of these on one server. Let's say that you're dealing with uh, small sets of databases here, 20 gig, 5 gig, 
uh, 10 gig databases here. So from a relational standpoint, what's that? 35 gigs of database, which isn't too much, uh, right? You could probably work with 8 gigs of RAM on something like that. Uh, then your relational OLAP is 150 gigs, and most of that's not active, so you could probably deal with a 32 gig uh, RAM machine to cover both of these maybe. Uh, and then you've got a small database over here that let's just say you're storing only the pre-calculated aggregates, and it's a rather small 3 gigabyte cube. And so you have a SAN, and you can fit all of this on the SAN, and it's really fast to access. But should you? Just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? There are other questions at play. Just because I can fit it all on one machine doesn't mean I should. Okay? Because if we can, if I can make this all one machine, I only need one license. Okay. So, number two. We have to go down the list to really understand all this, the answers to all these questions. Number two, the database sizes. Obviously, hardware is going to be a very limiting factor. Uh, the size of the disks today, you're probably going to be okay with that. Um, the, uh, the memory is definitely going to be a limiting factor. Uh, do you need 64 gigs? Can you afford from your budget uh, to get uh, a terabyte of memory installed? Um, should you use local disks or should you use a SAN, a storage area network? How many requests per second is your hardware going to be able to handle? Are we dealing with gigabit Ethernet, uh, which I would be assuming would be what you would work with, right? So the size of the database is, is going to be a major limiting factor. Okay? That's going to often be a major thing. Right? And I know a lot of times you want to be able to put it all on one server but you might not be able to. Okay, you simply might not be able to. If we increase the sizes, and this is a 300 gigabyte, and this is a 100 gigabyte, and this is now a 200 gigabyte server, and now we have a 1.5 terabyte uh, relational OLAP and a 700 gig cube, you know what? You're probably, from a memory standpoint, you're probably going to not be able to, to actually give your users the response times that they need. You're probably just going to have to separate these out into multiple servers. Okay? Memory is going to be a major limiting factor for you here. All right, obviously, the more users that you're throwing at the system, the more hardware that we need. Right? Also, I would add in here, and I just thought of this, and uh, I didn't add it in here, but Obviously, uh, the response time required, the SLA, the service level agreement that you might have with an organization or within your own department that says, you know, all queries must be served in under three seconds. That's going to drive this. Uh, you know, you're going to have to have bigger hardware if you have a bigger uh, a, you know, or smaller target, rather, that you can hit it with. Uh, don't forget about adding time into your planning. So don't just buy for the size of your database today. Uh, you know, future-proof this. Buy a server or a set of servers that are going to still be able to hold your database in 24 months, even if the database grows faster than you expect it to do. Definitely want to plan for success there. No, Matt, you you kind of have to map your hardware needs and your server licensing to what you think the users are going to need um, and that would also include not buying a SQL Server license today and instead planning on upgrading in six months. Uh, for example, those of you that are on SQL Server 2008, one of the things in SQL Server 2008 R2 that a lot of you who do reporting services will want are the maps. So in SQL Server 2008 R2 reporting services, you can do map controls. So your reports can be based on geography. You can show a map of the United States with circles showing density population. Uh, the incredibly visual, very professional, um, doesn't have to be a country, it can be a state, uh, you can do all kinds of things. Don't buy that SQL Server 2008 license today stay on SQL Server 2005 for six months 
and then buy the SQL Server 2008 R2 if you know that that's a feature you guys are going to want. Investigate it. Be prepared. Um, you know, there's no upgrade path for a lot of these licenses. They're just basically use them or lose them. So you know, be prepared for that kind of stuff there. Uh, the last one, what about uptime needs? Or uh, I guess I could add in another one of those things where I think of it as it, as it comes on the screen, you could also add your SLA in here, your service um, uh, level, your service level agreement that says relational queries must be served in less than a quarter of a second. Data warehousing queries must be served in less than three seconds. Uh, analytics queries must be served in less than a quarter of a second. Okay. All of those lead to different requirements. And so you may have to segment these off into separate machines to be able to meet those. Uh, like your data entry systems may have to have the five nines or the six nines of uptime. Whereas your data warehouse could be down for up to 24 hours without it, you know, breaking the rules of your organization. So you kind of have to map your own information to what you need. And the, the thing is, I don't know what the right answer is for you. Everybody's different. I can give you the right questions to ask, but, you know, you've got to deal with office politics and budgets and make those decisions on your own. At least you have the right things to, to ask and consider. Right? All right, enough chatter in the lecture. Let's actually do the install.